Hello, this is Denver Riddle of Color Grain Central, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to be covering the setting of the dynamic range or contrast. The second order of operation after we've set the exposure is to set the dynamic range or contrast. This is adjusting the shadows and the highlights to where we want them to be. First, some definitions. Dynamic range is the range of luma values from the darkest shadows to the brightest highlights that can be represented on a recording medium. Our eyes can see an amazing amount of dynamic range in nature, but cameras are not able to capture that same amount that we can see. Therefore, one of the roles of a DP is to compress this dynamic range through the use of lighting and scrims until the camera can capture that dynamic range. Once we get the footage into the video pipeline, the dynamic range may be a little compressed with raised shadows and suppressed highlights. The colorist then expands the dynamic range to its fullest extent and what our audience then perceives on the playback monitor or screen is what our eyes originally saw. Isn't that cool? I love it. The definition of contrast is more specifically the actual difference between the shadows and highlights. The greater that difference, the greater the contrast. Our objective when setting the shadows and the highlights is to adjust the dynamic range and set the level of desired contrast. Now let's do some color grading. Let's first start with setting the shadows to where we want them to be. In this video clip, the shadows are raised, giving the image a flat look. Fortunately, the shadows are the easiest to set because we typically set them to zero IRE using the shadow puck. As we drag down the shadows, you'll see the trace move down on the waveform monitor. And as soon as the trace begins to touch the zero IRE line, then we stop. Unless, of course, we're going for a punchier look, then pushing them even further will create more contrast by what is known as crushing the blacks, going for more contrast but at the expense of detail. You may have noticed as we did this, it affected our midtones, perhaps our center focus. To adjust for this, we bring the global exposure back up and the shadows back down, ping-ponging back and forth like I mentioned in the previous tutorial until we have set our shadows where we want them to be and maintained our center focus exposure. On to the highlights. The highlights are a little more difficult to set as their levels can vary greatly based on the subject matter in the scene and your personal preference. Things that are overexposed or clipping, such as a window or a reflection in a scene, are fine to be set at 100 IRE. These things are blown out. There is no more detail. Things like clouds, a white wall, or bright clothing would typically be set somewhere between 70 to 90 IRE. Determining this is something that just takes practice, and you can refer to the Ansel Adams Zone System as a reference until you get better at gauging the exposure of highlights. The idea here is to expand the dynamic range without losing too much detail in the highlights. And as far as a personal preference, you might just raise the highlights for a high key look or to suggest a certain time of day. Likewise, with the highlights, adjusting them may influence our center exposure, so we address that accordingly like we did with the shadows. In conclusion, let me just reiterate what we've learned. Expanding the dynamic range is effective for two reasons. Number one is that it creates a level of realism that we see naturally in real life, and that is that things have a high dynamic range. And number two is that adding contrast creates pop in the image. When there's higher contrast, our eyes can better discern the details. Sometimes all an image really needs is a little more contrast, and this is best achieved by pushing the shadows and highlight controls in opposite directions, thus increasing the difference between the shadows and highlights, creating high contrast and an expanded dynamic range. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching.